Hello everyone, and you will notice today that it's actually Ryan doing the introduction. That's because Krebs is off with his nose stuck in books, and he is looking for um, to get prepared for his exams. So I kind of have a treat for you guys, because we're going a little out of the norm here. It will not be myself and Krebs shoutcasting today. I actually have a guest, and that is Aramon KG. Say hello. Hello everybody, as you... As, of course, Ryan already said, I will be joining him in this cast, and hopefully I'll give my insight in the game as well as try to comment the best way I can. And thanks for the invitation, Ryan. And I, uh, I suckered Aramon into doing this. I'm not really sure how I succeeded in doing that, but it, it happens. So today we have a game on Semwa uh, between two players, Shadow of the Day, and mistaken, yeah, mm, there are not enough vowels in that word. And so we have um, Shadow of the Day is actually the real Rocky, and mistaken over here is playing as Wehrmacht, where Rocky is playing as the Americans. So we are paused at the five second mark, and we will be beginning in five, four, three, two, one. Unpause. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay, well, um, I don't know about you, Aramon, but uh, games have been getting kind of shy here, so people, if you're posting replays, post more replays, because God, do we need more replays. We do need mod replays, and especially replays from the beta, although someone could argue that the beta is at its final days these, uh, these times around, so maybe it's that people have a lack of interest into playing them, but it still stands to reason to play as much as you can and post as many games as you can, because out of these you may have the opportunity uh, to get casted, as it happens right now for these players. <laughs> So how uh, the thing? How are the things back in the American camp? Because over here it's just pretty standard: two pioneers into Wehrmacht quarters and into false grenadiers. Well, you'll you'll notice everyone that I switched over to the tack map just to show what's going on here. Um, the Wehrmacht players started off by moving to the medium fuel outside of his base. However, the American player turned around and went um, a standard engineer racks build, but he skipped over getting the fuel immediately, which is a little a standard. It's going to kind of put him behind the ball a little bit um, just from the get-go. You figure he's already down probably 10, 15 fuel at this point, and that's kind of important. In fact, it is, and it's kind of weird because you almost always see the American player just going for the fuel there, and that move by him actually may indicate that he favors favors munitions over fuel, which may indicate an early uh, grenade play by him. Apart from that, I can't really tell what his intentions are at the moment. No, and, a, a, you know, the only other indication that that might be, t typically speaking, I would say that that's an Axis style of play. They tend to be much more munitions dependent. The only case that I can see the Americans really going heavy on munitions is if they were choosing to play infantry. Yeah, well, that, that's a good point, because apart from grenades... Uh, Going infantry, of course, will uh, right hand side infantry will give your rifleman the ability to lay mines. And if there is a map that you can lay a lot of mines at many choke points, that is none other than Semwa. It, and absolutely there. Uh, you know, obviously on Semwa, you have uh, three different entrances. You have the bridge outside of each base here and here. You have the secondary bridge, which actually down here in the south is a bridge. Up here in the north, it's this road. And then you have this third area here in the north, which is this hillside, and down here in the south is right over here this small land bridge that connects up near this high fuel. And so those three points there are heavily, can be heavily guarded by either side to keep the other from getting over. That's exactly what goes on. However, I feel a bit... Um 
uneasy with what the Wehrmacht player is doing. He focuses a little bit too much on the west side of the map and leaving his cutoff kind of uh, vulnerable to enemy harassment. I'm not sure how that is going to play out in the end. No, and we have, uh, we have an engineer squad almost getting taken down by Volks here as the, uh, the cutoff uh, right outside of the Wehrmacht base was going on. It seems like Rocky was paying a little more attention to that than he was to the engineers, but he did get the engineers safely um, out of there, so that should help him long term, just not by losing them. True that. However, in this particular case, the American player uh, is a little bit overconfident uh, and overcommitting to the attempt to cut the Wehrmacht player off. He did not have any information on where his MG42 is, and as a result, he gets suppressed on most of his rifle squads, and he will have to come up with something to get out of there. No, and we see this. We see this flank rolling around here with these two riflemen on the roadside. Um, of course, he's got a Volk squad to back him up, but it looks like he's actually doing fairly well in getting around to this MG and trying to take it out. But he's taken some pretty heavy losses, and his third squad has to get out of there. Yeah, that were uh, that were heavy losses on those riflemen. Of course, manpower drain is something that you most probably want to avoid as the American early on. You will need to be cost efficient with your, the use of your troops uh, and it's actually the Wehrmacht player that needs to be taking that uh, health loss and that uh, squad member loss because that's exactly where it matters since, you know, he cannot heal the way Americans can heal with the trial center. Uh, and I agree with you. I think one of the things that the American player has done, though, by pushing, and it may be completely unintentional because those things happen, um, but by pushing the Wehrmacht player over here to the west side, he's allowed himself to not only cut off the Wehrmacht player, but also take all of this east side here and actually just cutting off the fuel. Um, limiting the fuel income of the Wehrmacht player. He does... Oh. Yeah, he, he loses... That was a Flamer squad on the retreat. And it and it's it's a very sad day when, when your guy's with flamethrowers. But it's always the retard with the flamethrower. Always. And you can count on that. Yeah, well, the eventual demise of those flamethrower uh, engineers came after the fact that they were suppressed almost instantly by those false grenadiers, something that, of course, is kind of a trademark of the retail at this uh, <laughs> stage of a company of heroes. They very easily get suppressed. And one more point uh, regarding the harassment by the American player and the eventual capping of the whole uh, east side of the map is that Wehrmacht can't really afford to control two fronts at the same time, something that we just witnessed. Although, he seems to be making a n nice choices. The Wehrmacht player is getting a sniper there and actually managing to kill that uh, Pioneer squad as well. Oh, and we have a Volk squad down to one member and running in red cover and got two squads of bars following after him and gets away. Um, we did we did see that engineer squad go down to the the sniper out by the Wehrmacht player down here. One of the things to notice here is these sandbags that are right in front of the fuel point. The engineers came up, they laid them down so that they had some cover, so that they had a chance to get the decap off on that fuel. And now we have a sniper just kind of picking away at these riflemen a little bit. Um, the riflemen lay in a mine in front of this house here. Um, a, the nice thing about six-man squads is you can take a few sniper shots before you really have to worry about them. And so we see that rifle squad trying to come up on the sniper here, and it looks like, oh, the MG covers it and lets the sniper get away without having to retreat it. Yep, nice uh, nice play by the Wehrmacht uh, player here, just supporting his sniper with the MG42. The American player, of course, knew where that sniper was by just continually clicking on his unit sniped notification, something that uh, is widely used by players uh, when facing snipers. And I, I want to take this uh, small uh, amount of time to comment on the sniper choice here and the... Um, and the eventual bar upgrade that came into play for the American player, which means that he won't be taking any more uh, that is uh, that as fast as he would if he hadn't gone for those bars. And that sniper actually may be a very sound choice against bars. 
I think the uh, the loss of the the engineer squads, the two engineer squads, put Rocky a little bit behind. Obviously, not having that early fuel, um, he was able to cut off the Vermont fuel, but it did kind of delay his teching to a certain extent. We see over here, we've got a supply yard up, we have the racks up, but we don't. He probably chose bars actually in just waiting for engineers to come out to build a motor pool. Maybe, yeah. Well, losing all those engineers actually hurts. Actually, not only hurts your presence on the field, but also your your uh, building capability back in your base. And uh, I'm not sure, however, how he's gonna make use of those bars against so many tier one uh, infantry units out by the Wehrmacht player. It's it's a pull. It's a tough thing to pull off. Well, the the choice of bars and flamers as a general strategy requires you to really be good at flanking those MGs. When you know you've got two MGs on the field, a sniper and two Volks currently, along with two Pioneers. Actually, it looks like three MGs on the field in total. Am I correct? Yep, there are three. There's one more back into the Wehrmacht player's base. Yeah, so that's going to be very hard um, to cope with with bars. Uh, you know, you've got an extended tier one play here. You've got a, a fairly good possible flank with this rifleman here over the river, but he can't move on it because of the MG in the church, which is notoriously hard to throw grenades at, and the sniper and MG that are sitting in uh, just outside of the graveyard here. It's going to be very hard to go in that direction. So I think we've got a little bit of manpower and some fuel floating. He's probably going to reinforce these engineers and get a motor pool going just to try and uh, break through that defensive line there. Yeah, all in all, the last attempt by the American player to flank that position did not actually uh, work, uh, although he did quite a bit of damage on those false squad, but two MG42s and a sniper more than enough to deal with two engineer uh, with two riflemen and single engineer. There was not another unit supporting them. There were some riflemen this by the net. They did not move in, in time, so that gave ample time to the Wehrmacht player to reposition his MG42 as well. And he even has decked up to um as old face and has uh, started building his Sturm Armory and having seen bars you're probably already guessing what that means for the American player it's a puma um. <laughs> for those of you not it, yeah for those of you not familiar with uh, red versus blue it's an old uh, halo machinima um, it, a puma is held by one of the characters to be a mythical creature and uh, doesn't exist. <laughs> well, they do exist in Company of Heroes, and they are quite deadly. Raffman can attest to that every day of the week. And so they should. They kind of earn it. They're kind of jerks. <laughs> Now, what do you think about some of the mine placement by the American player? We saw one outside of this house here, which has already gone off. We see one in the uh, hedges near the low fuel um, on the west side of the map. And we see another um, just behind some tank traps going to the um, munitions in the north. Well, yeah, the, the mine placement in that particular is pretty straightforward, except for that one outside the house. Um, at the south, the stone house in the west. Although it did actually blow, so blow off, so it did actually uh, have something to uh, pay for itself. So it's kind of weird. Usually, with mines, you can't go wrong unless you place them, uh, for example, at the borders of the map. Otherwise, <laughs> hate to cut you off here. We just had demo charges upgraded, and we got flamers actually pushing in on the fence on the south side of the Wehrmacht base. And so they're going to burn this uh, fence down, and they're probably going to get into the Wehrmacht base. I don't know if the Wehrmacht player can even really see them doing that. They probably can now. Yeah, that's a very sneaky move, very risky move to spend all that uh, fuel, 30 fuel, into getting demolition charges. However, the American player right now does have to deal with the Puma. I don't know, if he blows up the steel memory, yeah, that's a win, but the steel memory can be rebuilt, and the Puma is still on the field, then pretty much uh, reigning supreme on the field at this moment. 
Yeah, and we and we do have that Puma. We got Stickies upgrading the Sturm Armory, not quite going down to uh, a single demo charge, but it looks like the Flamers will go ahead and take that out.